Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 583rd episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today, we have Nigel Thomas, a smart dude, has a website called Alpha Inbound Digital Marketing, and he gets into AI uh, and other types of technology to help you run better ads. Uh, and we get into not just the technology, um, but some tips and tricks for cleaning up your email list, uh, how to test your headlines, uh, to see what really works, uh, how to do personalized marketing, uh, even though it's, it's mass marketing, right? You're merging and, and doing things like this, but personalizing it through technology to make it seem more better, okay? Uh, on his website, you'll see he talks about revenue beats ROAS, so we will explain that in this episode. Uh, I'm recording the intro on my anniversary. Uh, so after this, heading out for a few days to goof off. But uh, a friend of ours, um, a young man, he grew up, uh, and he was our neighbor, and he's got an older brother, and they kind of hung out with my sons, and they do jiu-jitsu with us. But Corey um, is a guitarist. He is a singer-songwriter. Uh, made it very far on American Idol a couple years ago. And uh, so I wrote a song and he recorded it for our anniversary. And um, so I told my wife, she was getting ready, and I said, Hey, Corey, we just wrote a song. He's heading to Nashville, and he is heading to Nashville uh, as we're doing this. And, and I said, Hey, Corey wants us to, to listen to the song and you know, give him some feedback. And she was like, Does he really want feedback? (laughs) You know, because he's never asked us for feedback. He's on Spotify and everywhere else. And uh, so look him up, Corey Young. And um, so I, and I wrote this pretty quick. Uh, I've written a lot of stuff over the years, even when I was younger. I I wrote, I wrote a poem for her before we got married. And my cousin is a graphic designer and she, um, what's the word? Not, not really calligraphy, but just nice handwriting wrote it and framed it and as we drove we got married here at in southern california i was in the air force as we drove across the country um we stopped in austin my my cousin was living there at the time her husband was going through um his getting his phd in chemical engineering from uh from ut so we stopped there and kelly gave it to her so that was cool it was a surprise so it's probably been 27 years though since I wrote anything else. So, as so it was kind of cheesy and then funny, but I kind of wove our whole history into the song. So she's listening at the very beginning. And she's like, "Oh, eh, kind of slow," because you got to realize, like, I wrote this pretty much over text. I wrote it in the laptop, texted it to Corey. We edited, went back and forth over text, and I got him the final lyrics. Um. Wednesday night and he recorded it Thursday and gave it to me so I'm doing this Friday September 30th so <laughs> you know we, we weren't trying to write like some award-winning song it's it's the thought that counts but she's listening she's like oh yeah kind of slow oh kind of corny lyrics but by the second I don't know, chorus or I, I don't know the, the words right but whatever the set of lines by the second set she's like wait what (laughs) and then she's like is this about me (laughs) i had to rewind it like three times during the song then i sent her the lyrics she's getting her nails done now and then so i have time to do a little bit of work before we leave but uh we were cracking up so if you need something like that done hit up Corey young because i've seen these ads all over social media uh guys having songs written and i'm like Hell, my neighbor does probably can do that. I hit him up. So yeah, I can totally do that, and it was awesome. So look him up, Corey Young. And, uh, you'll be glad you did. Uh, I'm getting some feedback uh, on Twelve Weeks to Peak. Uh, I really haven't uh, been promoting it. Um, like I said, I'm working with a developer, uh, and just had crazy between the weddings, my third year reunion, uh, traffic and conversion uh, summit this week in San Diego. Things will calm down for a bit. I'm heading to Austin in a couple of weeks in mid-October, but uh, I'm going to work on promoting this more, getting some people through it, uh, give me some feedback as you have some success. So, but but take me up on that. It's free. We've got a free uh, LinkedIn group, 12weeksttopeak.com. And um, 
Yeah, well, it's a great time, right? You got the final quarter of the year. Why not start right now? And um, have the best, well, the best and the hardest, the last hard quarter of your business life. Because this will help you dial it in, figure out what works. Okay, there is, there's no magic in it. It's just an accountability thing. I give you ideas, things that you need to do on a regular basis. And it's that discipline that will help you determine what you really need to do, what you really need to focus on to grow. All right, 12weeksofpeak.com. If you want to write Mo Betta, check out Drunk Emails at the charm offensive drunk dot the sales podcast dot com. So I'll leave you with that one. All right. Get you some of that and then come back and listen to this episode with Nigel. Nigel Thomas, row as is dead all the way from Bristol, United Kingdom. Welcome to sales podcast. How the heck are you? I'm not too bad. Thank you so much, Wes. It's, it's a pleasure to be here today on a Monday evening. Well, Monday evening for me, but look, yeah, the sun's noon, still shining. <laughs> noon for me. And, um, you know, there's a really good NASCAR race at Bristol. Did, did you know that? I bet I you didn't knew. know that. I actually didn't know that. I, I'd i say I'm a little bit into F1, but on the racing side of things, it's not my sport of choice. It's actually football. But you guys call it soccer. Man. Bristol, Tennessee. You got to check it out, man. It's, and it's a little, it's, it's a little tiny track, half a mile. So imagine 43 cars with like 1100 horsepower running around for hours. Uh, I haven't been to that one. I've been to a, another small one and it'll, it'll shake your fillings loose on your teeth. So now you got to come over and, and experience that. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I actually watched <laughs> the, the Ford versus Ferrari film the other day. Have you seen it? I have not, but I heard it was good. It's amazing. I'd really recommend you checking it out. It's it's a blast, honestly. It's a really good film. I think you'll enjoy it. Well, and, um, you know, Formula One is gaining more popularity over here. I I never really watched it, but they they built a track, though, in Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. uh, near where yeah. my mom lives. And um, yeah, I want to get out there for one, and people just rave about it. It's good. It's uh, real good fun. So you should fly out here, okay? And and take me to Bristol, Tennessee, and then take me to Austin. Okay, as a thank you for having you on the show. I mean, it's the least you could do. Yeah, we'll see. So I'm actually coming to New. I'm coming to New York in Q4 this year. Oh. So yeah, if you if you're coming down to the Big Apple, we can make something happen. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to New York. Hell, I live 90 minutes from LA, and I don't go to LA. <laughs> Some cities I just don't like. But I digress. <laughs> What's well, your I, was in London. I was in london a few years ago to see my son that was cool uh yeah. but totally different vibe um yeah, so man ways. so roas return yeah. on ad spend right yes you're saying yeah. don't focus on that focus on revenue i think i yeah. like it <laughs> yeah for sure for sure so i mean this is somewhat technical for people who aren't in the industry so to give everyone a bit of an insight we work with direct to consumer brands e-commerce brands who sell physical products and we drive them more customers more revenue obviously through social media platforms like facebook tiktok and of course instagram and the thing is with roas is that's the, the platform metric return on ad spend how much you spend versus how much you get back and that's inside of Facebook. But here's the big problem for anyone who knows anything about the marketing space and the whole Apple fiasco and the data stuff. Essentially, it's all inaccurate now because Apple did all these you know, privacy changes. So if you focus on ROAS, you're basically now relying on inaccurate data. So instead, you want to focus on looking at the overall revenue of your business and especially if you're an e-commerce store, you're not just spending on one marketing channel, you're spending on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, wherever it might be. You need to look at the entire marketing budget spent and then the entire revenue that comes back. And it's actually an acronym called MER, which stands for Marketing Efficiency Ratio, which is actually the better way to do it, really to see it from a macro perspective versus what I think ROAS is a micro perspective. So hopefully that gives you a good idea. So I get it. Yeah. But obviously you got to track each one to a degree, right? Let's say you're throwing, 
fifty thousand dollars out there and 25 is on tiktok 25 is on on facebook but one of them has a three to one you know and the other one is Mm. you're losing 10 percent. i mean how how inaccurate are the numbers now from facebook and and everything else do the privacy changes like literally 50 percent in accuracy We've even seen it worse than that. And by the way, just to your point, you're right. You should always track that. But is it the leading indicator? That's the point. My point is that it shouldn't be the leading indicator. You should track it as a secondary metric, but you should focus on the actual revenue. Because let me challenge you on something for a second. What if you're a physical store and you're trying to get people to come to your business to provide products on the internet, right? And then someone sees you on Facebook, but then just as about they're going to buy the product, their mum calls, something happens. Then they see one of your ads through Google or through TikTok. Now, as we know in sales, it takes, let's just say seven touch points, whatever the number is. I know there's differences of opinions there. Now, the thing is, is that the last attribution that comes through, let's just say TikTok is the one that gets them over the line, whatever it might be. What's going to show in that platform is that TikTok brought that sale in, but actually Facebook or a different channel was part of that process. And if you look at single channel attribution, you can't see that customer journey. I hope that kind of made sense. Oh, it makes total sense. Um, and I know some guys in this space that have made some some SaaS platforms uh, to help track that. And um, because it is Which, it is tricky. And, you know, it was, there was an analogy. Uh, it was... Um, I think it was a restaurant, but uh, I might be it might have been like a convenience store, but I think it was a restaurant or a diner, and they they stayed open like seven days a week, mm-hmm. and and they learned so even though one of the days, whatever Sunday or whatever, I don't know, or they stayed open twenty four hours, but it was when they looked, oh, we don't have anybody coming, let's let's close during those hours, and so that made sense from a from a ROAS standpoint, right? Or from just a, mm-hmm. a cost of goods sold or operating expense standpoint, it made sense. But what they learned was that when they when they did close during that time, they lost additional sales when they were open because it was kind of it was basically serving as advertisement. People would drive by at 10 o'clock at night, not intending to, oh, oh yeah, we need to go there. Oh wow, they're still open. Yeah, we should make some plans and go there. So it served kind of as that secondary, because you're right, we, golly, I, I looked at pull-up bars on Friday, looked them up on, on Facebook. You've been following and around everywhere, right? <laughs> now they're everywhere, everywhere I go, <laughs> yeah. are pull-up bars. It's like, have, oh you bought a pull, have, you, have you bought a pull-up bar yet? No, I'm looking at it for a, an event that we're doing. So it's not even for me, and it's not even for a few months. I'm like man there it's all over instagram and facebook you know so yeah so eventually i will click one of those and buy yeah uh so how how do you track it how do you know how can you attribute accurately uh or is it like you're saying that okay i spent 50 grand Mm -hmm. the raw numbers say facebook was three to one tiktok was one to one but there yeah it's it's a cumulative effect obviously people are on all of these platforms all the time yeah um and you're just building that brand awareness in these touches huh yeah for sure so there's a few things you can do you can use different tools like rightly pointed out there's a, a SaaS product in our market called triple whale that's specifically for e-commerce brands which is pretty powerful and there's also post-purchase customer surveys. So when someone buys your product, as they go through the checkout, and obviously not everyone will fill it out, but you can just ask them, where did you originally hear about our service? And sure, like I said, the accuracy is not going to be 100%, but again, it's it's adding up all of these things to give you a better understanding overall of your market and doing that research. So there's some things you can do, but I actually wanted to mention another point, which is actually a real issue for these companies because we're just doing, we're getting paid to let's just do Facebook or Meta, whatever you want to call it. But the thing is, is they'll hire another marketing agency to do YouTube or Google. So now if you put yourself in a business owner position, you want to see everything from a whole, but you're paying different agencies for different things. So now that does become a real issue. 
And we've had problems with that, if I'm being totally frank. So when uh, one business is using multiple agencies, that's when it can be a bit of an issue to see where I'm coming from. Because obviously they're trying to think like, where should we put the money into, right? Well, and using multiple agencies, kind of like having multiple swing coaches for golf. I mean, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they've got specialties for those different platforms. So, you know, it's yeah. very different to do like Google to to Facebook, for example. Yeah, and, and it depends on the size of the company. If they're small, then they might have Definitely. a specialty. But a larger firm should have the expertise in-house to span platforms. But, you know, it, it depends on the size of your company as well. Sure. Um, but yeah, that can be a freaking mess. Um, yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult for sure. Um, again, from our side, you're right. You know, we're, we're still a startup. We're like, you know, we're 12 months into this journey and we want to stay specialized until we've got the resources to go out, but still keep the quality. So how did you get into this? Yes. So Alpha Inbound, let me put it like this. A year ago, just over a year ago, I was actually unemployed. I've been chewed up and spat out of another startup. Essentially didn't see eye to eye with the business owners, the whole story behind that. <laughs> we, we, yeah, there's, there's a whole story behind I, that. I can relate. <laughs> yeah. And um, yep. yeah, you know, you know how it is. Oh, yeah. But some, some the best, some of the best lessons in life, so I'm sure you'll agree, I learned the hard way. So I learned more in that period than I ever did before. But the point was, was we, you know, we got this marketing agency in the real estate space, you know, dealing with realtors. That's pretty hard. So that that taught me a lot about business. And we were helping these guys find, you know, people who buy houses through Facebook. So lead generation marketing agency. We got to a seven figure run rate. And then, yeah, there was internal struggle. I want to be respectful. I don't want to mention any names, but it basically didn't work out. I found myself unemployed. And Josh, who's actually the founder of Alpha Inbound, he's a world-class marketer, but he's a little bit more introverted. So you know, he doesn't shout the loudest, but he cares so much and he just gets great results. He's based over in Virginia, just <clears throat> you know, in the United States. And I reached out to him because I've done some work on a prior project like four years before. And I told him the situation, you know, from my side, I didn't have anything to lose. So I basically said, hey, man, I can come on here, get the sales, do the business development. You get, you know, these guys amazing results. And I'd even spoke to him and said, my idea is I'm going to get some commissions here and then I'm going to go and start my own thing. So that's what we did 12 months ago, you know, took the risk. The problem was, and this is where my genius idea didn't work out too well, is when I got inside of the business, I realized there wasn't anything there. There wasn't any CRM. There wasn't any case studies built out. There was no website. There was no sales process. There was no ICP. There wasn't really anything because Josh just didn't have the time to do it. He was more acting as a, a freelancer, and he's even said that himself. So at that point, I realized... I'm either going to have to go and get a job or I'm going to have to stick at this shit. Bearing in mind, I was unemployed. I wasn't getting paid any money because it's all on commission. I'm going to have to stick this out. And I felt like I had a point to prove to myself. And one of my favorite quotes is from Winston Churchill. And it goes like this. One man with conviction will overwhelm a hundred who have only opinions. Because at the end of the day, if you really do believe in something, sure, we can talk about the aspects of the sales process, vitally important, it goes so far. And at that point, I had a crossroads and that's the decision where I made and that really changed everything. And anyway, to cut the long story short, we can go into the different aspects of it. You know, we've, we're have we going to hit a, a seven-figure run rate soon in our first year of the rebranding this agency. And we've got 20 multi-seven, eight-figure brands are working with, set ourselves up for a pretty good Q4. Nothing special yet. But from zero reputation for me, like I'm fairly happy with it, got big ambitions and we move on and um, yeah, looking to build out a sales team and like go at it really hard in 2023. So that's pretty much the journey and what I've been up to over the last 12 months was. <laughs> so, so you reached out to me um, through LinkedIn. Correct. Uh, and was that, what's that? And email. And email. Where did I respond? I think I responded LinkedIn. on LinkedIn, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 LinkedIn it was. Uh, and was that automated? It, well, it, there's a, there was a process behind it. I had someone else helping me with it. 
uh, right. But so was it, was it just software running or did somebody, or was there a human no, someone behind actually, that yeah. doing the reach out? A human went and did the reach out and also the podcast was profiled. Like as oh, in, gotcha. as I specifically wanted to come on your podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get pitched five or 10 times a day. So, you know, so, it was just, I think I just liked it was direct and, and clean and uh, like, yeah, okay, let's do it. So, you know, you're doing something right. <laughs> appreciate that i think i mean you can see my, my camera's in black and white it's on purpose that it's it's a no bullshit approach like people are busy you're busy everyone's busy why not just cut to the chase and tell people the truth you know yeah a lot of people don't yeah so it's surprising so folks are listening to this i mean in a way this doesn't apply to me i don't do i don't have an e-commerce business i'm not selling direct hmm. to consumers you know yeah. so why the hell should i listen to you <laughs> well, we took and talk on on the on the sales side because now we're talking. Yeah, finally. We're talk- yeah, for sure. So there's found you told me before we started that you know some founders will listen to this and they're trying to they've got a big idea they got a product where it's SaaS whether it's a service based product and you know they they want to get out they want to tell the market they might have that conviction but if you don't have a process behind it you can't go and obviously get business. So how did we do that? Well, we did it through cold email and cold outbound. Now, obviously I had some previous experience here, but the first steps we took is really understanding our ideal client profile. And I know, you know, you you talk about these things on this podcast a lot. Like we said before you got started, you're in 600 episodes. So please, you know, cut me up and I can go into different areas. But for me, understanding our ideal client profile better than anyone else was majorly important. So I actually jumped on the calls with other agencies, our competitors, and I pretended that I was an e-commerce owner to understand their sales process, to understand the kinks in their process. I then also got on calls with founders of these companies to understand their pain points. And it was only after I'd done all that research, as well as the prior experience I had in the market, that we started sending out emails. Um, So I think that's vitally important for anyone to understand, because one analogy I'll use, Wes, is it's called Susie's, like, what's Susie having for lunch? And I, I spoke about this the other day. So Susie's there on a park bench, imagine this, and you need to understand what she's having for lunch. You can go on Google, you can find her on social media, you can look at all the past posts, you can try and figure it out, you can build a tool, a SaaS product to try and work out exactly what she's going to have for lunch based on all these different variables, or you can just go up and ask her. And that's... Well, but that's, then them, you, she might look at you like you're creepy. Yeah, but at <laughs> nine times out of ten... If you ask nicely and you understand how to build rapport with people, she'll tell you the answer. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, especially startups and founders, they forget this. And to do outreach properly, you need to understand how to talk the language of your ideal client profile. And that's what I did. And that's why when we started getting some results pretty fast, it was because of the due diligence prior. Does that make sense? Sure. So... How does that work in reality, though? Like, just call and ask, call and or send an email. Will will people reply? Will they answer honestly? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you need to actually have something that's going to be valuable. You, you can't just be wasting people's time. So you need to have some sort of intent around what you want and have that direction. So let's just say you know, let's just say an attribution tool, you just said there's some SaaS products out there that are trying to solve attribution. Be like, hey, I'm actually just building a a SaaS product around attribution. And I was wondering if I could jump on to have a quick call, have a quick call with you, ask you some questions. And guess what? You can be one of the first 10 people to try it out for free. Like if, if you're honest like that, you know, I think you'll jump on a call, you get some understanding, understand the market, and people are going to respond to you. If you're just cold outreaching them, tell them that you've got the best thing since sliced bread, guess what? They've got a hundred other emails in their inbox telling them exactly that. So yeah, that yeah, you need to have something there of value. You understand? Yeah. Um, how are you doing cold email? 
because that can be yeah, yeah. tricky. Sure. Um, sure. You know, is it one to one? I mean, uh, unless you're got a overseas server and or spam in the world, it pretty much has to be one to one, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. So, sorry, just clarify in terms of one-to-one, you mean as in you're personally sending each email, right? Right. Okay. If it's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, we do use software, but we do personalize at the same time. So, I think there's a... People say in 2022, cold email doesn't work anymore. I say 4 billion people use cold email if you don't know how to get attention out, like one person's attention out of 4 billion, then, you know, that's that's your problem. It's not mine. And sure, people might argue there's different channels. It depends on your industry. But at the end of the day, if you can get through to someone, if you can speak their language, you can understand their pain points, you can put a smile on their face, you can make them laugh, you can be concise, you can have a good call to action, and you can get the deliverability so it actually gets into their inbox, You've got to get a damn good chance if you send out 300 emails to get on a call with someone. So there's a lot of different factors here. The first thing is understanding deliverability, how to actually get into that person's inbox. And I don't want to get too technical unless you want me to, because I feel like it might bore a few people. But essentially, right. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, sure, fine. So there's different... When you so it depends what you use if it's Gmail, Outlook, whatever else. But the first thing is is never use your main website. You want to use a subdomain. So if you use your main website and then you get blacklisted, which if people mark you as spam, you will. That means that if you're sending out emails to your clients, obviously you're now not going to be able to get in their inbox anymore. So set up like three or four different subdomains. Then you can get a tool. There's one called Lemlist, there's GMAS, there's different tools out there that will automatically warm up your email account for you. So it will essentially send out emails, it will receive emails, it will put emails into your inbox, it will take them out of spam, and it will show Google or whatever domain server you're using that you're basically good for the system. And once so what, that's done, what, yeah, go for what it. What are those emails? What, what, what were the tools? Lemlist. L-E-N-D-L-I-S-T? Yeah, so actually, if you type in Lem Warm, because that's the, the warm-up part of their tool, Lem Warm, L-E-M-W-R-W-A-R-M, Lem Warm. Oh, L-E-M, M is in yeah. Mary, right? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, okay. so Lem, Lem Warm, use that, use that tool for about two months. It'll warm up your email, and it will essentially get it to a point where it's, it's healthy. And if... At that point, you then write a good subject line, which is on target or ICP, and we can go into the structure of an email in a second, but you can get our campaigns get 80% open rates. To a, to a, technically it's a cold list. Cold. I mean, you're using a tool cold. to warm them up. So they're, yep. it's, it's not truly a cold list, but in reality it is a cold list. Oh yeah. But the, the tool doesn't do anything with the contacts that you're pulling out. So, you know, well, it's in emailing of, them. No, it's right? not. Or, oh. it's, it's, it's basically, it, this is where it, it can get quite it technical. technical. It's, <laughs> yeah, it, it basically, so, so let's say I bought the tool to use and you also bought the tool to use. It would email the two of us, but thousands of people buy the tool to use up, to use to warm up their emails. So it's automatically interacting with everyone in the system. So it looks to Google like we're just sending out emails to each other, but in reality, the system is doing it all for us. So it's it's warming up that domain or the IP Correct. address. Yes. yes. I got exactly to show okay. Google that we're we're real, we're authentic, whatever else. Now, but again, this is only obviously a small part of, of the process. The next thing is, is by the way, I think I can, is that just my side? So I think I can, I can hear my voice repeating. Oh, oh um, okay. Okay, cool. So yeah, basically once you've done that, you now need to make sure you've done your targeting properly. So who are you reaching out to? Like who is your ideal client profile? So what decision maker are you trying to, are you trying to get a decision maker for us? We speak to founders, CMOs, or the head of marketing. 
So that's obviously important. What company size do you want to go after? We go over five to 30 million in revenue. What in terms of within your industry, are you going to go after a specific vertical? It's much better if you do. For example, we go after health and wellness brands. Again, we can drill down further, go after supplement brands. Supplement brands have a different language to beauty brands. So you need to understand the differences here and you'll understand sure. why it's important in a second. So this is the targeting. Then once you've done that, you need to make sure you enrich your lists properly. And this, if you're doing all manually, obviously you can hire a team to do it, but you need to make sure you've got valid email addresses, really try and get something for their LinkedIn profile. So you can use that as a different touch point. Again, if you want to try and get their number, there's different tools out there to do that, but make sure whatever you do before you send out the emails, you run them through a validation tool. The one we use is Never Bounce, And this will mean your bounce rate is really low, which is again, if your bounce rate's really high and all your emails bounce because they're all fake or wrong, that's going to be real bad news for your deliverability. So yeah. once all of that's targeting done, you now come to write the email out, okay? So subject line, again, there's, di there's different ones you can test. Quick question usually works pretty good. But if you can write a personalized subject line for each email, which is something relevant, for example, if I wrote you a subject line and said, you know, I'd, it'd have to be related. So it's going to be hard for me to think one on the spot, but something to do with the fact that you've you've nearly done 600 podcasts, like that's going to be pretty personalized compared to most of your emails in your inbox right now. So, you know, that's just an example. But when we actually write the email, what we do differently to other people is we include images and GIFs and videos to really get people's attention and something that's relatable. So we work with CBD brands. And what we did is when it was 420 a few months ago and Elon Musk was about to buy Twitter, our email at the top said, hey, you know, where's trust you're enjoying 420 like a new Twitter owner. And then it literally cut to a gif of Elon Musk smoking weed on the Joe Rogan podcast. And then it transitioned into a pain point, which was very specific to these people, which is talking about how to advertise compliantly on Facebook, which for CBD brand owners, if there's anyone out there listening to CBD brand owner, they will feel the pain because they know how hard it is to do that. And then it transitions to how exactly we did it for one of the biggest CBD brands in the space. So, and we told them exactly what we did, broke it down just like I did with you in that email message into three concise points. And then a call, simple call to action at the end, mind if I send sometimes over to talk further, or sometimes we do an interest-based call to action because I saw, you know, I went through some studies with Gong and they say that interest base sometimes does work better out of tons of analysis they've done. So for example, you just say, does this sound interesting to you or something seasonal around Q4, Black Friday, whatever. And that's pretty much it. But that might sound simple, but it takes a lot of research to get to that point. Um, but using images that make people laugh, that spice up people's day compared to all of those boring big blocks of text, which I get all the time, can often make the difference. Yeah, I try to tell people all the time. It's like you're dealing with humans, you know, like, oh, I'm B2B. Exactly. It's like there's no real B2B. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a human buying from a human. Yeah, you know, exactly. A human being is authorizing that PO, mm -hmm. you know, so treat them like a human. Yeah, 100%. And someone once said something which was really powerful to me, which is people remember you for how you make them feel. Right. So how okay. are you going to make someone feel that first email? You're going yeah. to make them feel like you're a bo you're boring because they're not going to respond to you if you do. Yeah, I had um, I had another Brit on the show years ago, John Buchan. Mm -hmm. and yeah, he... John Buchan. I know him. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And you know, sending drunk emails. Yeah, yeah. He's really and, good. Yeah, and it's just being human. He he cold yeah. emailed me and got on the show, and we've been friends ever since. I love his work. Yeah, um, and you know because people would say well this wouldn't work for me i sell b2b or whatever i sell fortune 500 like the, he emailed yeah, like fortune 50 companies yeah and, and this works and it's yeah. like uh, next week i fly out to colorado for my 30-year reunion from the air force academy 
And I mean, my classmates, some of them are still in, they're three-star generals. And a good friend of mine, he's a one or two-star general. Um, and I mean, we are goofballs, man. Like on our <laughs> private text and fantasy football. And I mean, we are, we would get in trouble if these text threads got out. Okay. But these are big, powerful. I mean, guys in charge of major corporations. Yeah. Okay. Airline pilots, uh, captains. And dude, we are goofballs. And so yeah. if you're, if you're at too, too stuck up or whatever you think, <laughs> if you're flat and dry with those guys, you won't get too far. Yeah, exactly. And here's the other thing, right? You're not going to make, not everyone's going to like it. Some people are going to get pissed off and riled up the wrong way. They could just be having a bad day. You pissed them off. Sure. But you're going to take a risk. Like, because if you're not, like if you're in the middle and you don't get noticed, that's the worst. You'd rather yeah. have some people who don't like what you're saying. Of course, like, you, you know, you have to be sensible about it. But you'd rather have some people who don't quite like what you say and a few people who really resonate with you. Because guess what? The people who didn't were never going to work with you anyway. It would have been right. a terrible client relationship. Yeah. So you almost yeah. filter people out. Yeah, all they can really do is say no. Exactly. I mean, I mean they're going to forget you. Uh, I've, I've had some interesting responses that are a little bit different to know, but yeah, <laughs> yeah I get your point. It's yeah, hard, yeah, I mean, but yeah, they never would have done business with you anyway. Exactly, exactly. So they have no so. life, no personality, you know? So it's like, it. look, I've, I've had some people, I mean, uh, like, I don't want their business. You know, this one gal, I took her call and then another and then, oh, one quick question, you know, and I'm like, I stopped following up with her. Yeah. It's like, I don't want her as a client. Yeah, exactly. Because you, you think know? about what's that, what's that going to do the, to your team and the back end resources? Oh, yeah. It's going to like, kill them. Yeah. So, you know, you'd rather, you know, choose who to lose, right? It's okay. Yeah, 100%. You know, you can say you, you can't save every puppy in the pound. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, we actually took a lot of inspiration from John Bacan um, through the strategies that he'd been using. So I think, you know, credit to him that the fact you brought him up. He's a really good guy and people should check him out. Very different yeah. to most people, but he cuts through the noise, man. Oh, totally. Yeah. And I, um, I, I finally, you talk about subdomains. It's like, I've known about subdomains forever. Uh, I've just, yeah. and I haven't used them on, on GoDaddy enough. Uh, yeah. So I started, started changing up even the intro to the sales podcast. And, and I've got, you know, different guys that I like, but I made drunk dot the sales podcast.com. <laughs> so that redirects to John's page with my affiliate link. Right. But it's, oh, um, yeah, I mean, he just good stuff. And, that's always been my style as well. Like I've had a, I've had a nurture sequence running forever. I, I made it, I think in 2012. Um, and it's, it's non-salesy. It's just, you know, once a month sends out something appropriate, you know? Um, and dude, I get compliments on that every month because something goes out. You know, at a minimum, you'll hear from me once a month, you know, if you opt in for something. And, uh, but just not being salesy, being relevant, you know, and they say, oh, people have short attention spans or whatever. It's like bullshit. Yeah. People, exactly. people will, people will spend 12 hours on a weekend when a new show comes out on Netflix. Yeah. So they have attention spans. They just, they don't suffer fools. Yeah. You know, we don't have and attention spans for boring stuff. Exactly. That's a, that's a, and the thing is, is a lot of the stuff out there these days, it doesn't have heart. It doesn't have like real personality. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's too many, it's it's too many AIs, you know, people trying to regurgitate and repurpose, you know, crap content just to cut a corner. It's like, yeah, good luck with that, dude. Yeah. I mean, I think some people, they take the whole authentic thing too far where they try to be authentic when it's like, no, you don't get it. Like, that's not how it works. You just, you just do it. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. They, they become, you know, they say they become a caricature of themselves. <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah, no, 100%. I do always also want to point out, considering it is obviously the sales podcast, that, I mean, for me, I don't know about what you think, marketing is anything to get someone to the call, but when you get them on the call, that's sales. And without a sales process, like a real sales process, you can do all the cold emails you want. But at the end of the day, once you've got people on that first call, you still then like, this is now another challenge. And you've, so if you can't convert people on calls and build that rapport and yeah, take them through a, pro, a real process, you're not going to like cold emails, not going to work. So I think that it's important to mention it. That's just as important. Yeah. Amen. I've always said, you know, marketing is just selling in print. Yeah. You know, you, the, the better, the, the more a marketer knows about sales and understands it, the better, you know, there'll be better people and, and, and companies need to stop like fighting with one another, you know, between sales and marketing. Like they're, yeah. they're always at odds at companies and it's like, y'all are on the same team, but far too often I see the uh, different man, you know, MBOs management by objectives, like marketing is paid on just raw leads coming in sales on, can they close them? You know? So if you're generating crap leads, you know, sales gets irritated and then they get irritated at each other. So management needs to own that and understand, you know, get the two sides uh, on the same side. <laughs> you know? what, do you, what do you think would be best to learn first though? Do you think it would be better to like be on calls, learn sales and then transition into marketing? Well, like a typical marketer, somebody that says they're in marketing probably doesn't want that. Interesting. They want to jump right into marketing. Mm -hmm. right? They want to be creative. Even salespeople. I had a guy just a couple of weeks ago tell me, you know, talking about being creative in sales. I'm like, that's probably the worst thing you can do. Yeah. You know, you, what's you, his close gotta, rate? Yeah. I mean, you got to be disciplined in sales, not yeah. creative, you know, and and the more that you master the fundamentals, the more creative you can be, mm. you know, but nobody wants to master the fundamentals. Like yeah, I always tell people, like, you know, I was talking about this the other day on the show. It's like in jujitsu, you know, our instructor, he was the world champion a couple of years ago before COVID for his, for his age and, and weight and belt. Um, and, you know, five and a half years I've trained, you know, five to six days a week. And We'd work, we do the same warm ups every day, you know, and, and the moves that we do are on purpose. But when you, when you're just starting out, you don't know the purpose. So, uh, did you ever see Karate Kid when you were younger? Yeah. Right. Wax on, wax off, <laughs> you know, exactly. paint the fence. Like, why am I doing it? He was new. He didn't understand. Right. But he's blocking. Right. Those are blocking moves and then striking moves. Oh, OK. But well, you got to do it over and over and over. And then in the heat of the moment, you can be creative because you've mastered everything. You've mastered the fundamentals. So you're in the right position to do something unique, yeah. you know, something creative. Uh, but very few people want it. So uh, it's rare that you'll see a marketer want to do sales i remember years ago two, back in 2000 i was working as a with this recruiting company and we put on workshops for veterans leaving the the military and um and we would i was on the company side so i'd get you know hiring people from big companies small companies whatever uh to come to the conference and interview and so i got 7-eleven they were headquartered in dallas that's where we did the meetings and all of my peers were like Military guy, you know, officer, they don't, they wouldn't want to work for McDonald's because at McDonald's, regardless of what title they were hiring you for, you had to work in the store at first. So imagine college graduate, army officer, work in the front counter at McDonald's at, at, at 7 Eleven. And I was like, hey, I hear you, but 7 Eleven had a compelling career path. And I'm like, maybe nobody will join. But they're coming to the conference, so you better give me some butts in the seat. And sure enough, a guy took the job, you know, but it was it was a hard sell. Mm. I wouldn't want to work the counter at a 7-Eleven, you know, but some will. 
Yeah. Uh, and not, not, not many people, not many sales guys like putting notes in the CRM. Not many pe- oh. sales guys like doing the follow-ups, but the, here's the thing as well, from a sales leadership standpoint, if you don't do those basics, then you can guarantee one thing when the next guys come in that you're training, they're definitely not going to do it. And that's when it gets real bad. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta put in the, put in the, the exercise, right? You gotta, you gotta put in the work. Uh, but, you know, salespeople, it doesn't hurt them to know marketing. Uh, sometimes, a lot of times I work for companies with bad marketing. I had to do some of my own, kind of my own grassroots kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, but all right. I mean, it led me to where I am now, you know, but sales and marketing are two sides of the same coin. Um, you know, but yeah, I mean, I'm glad you brought it up because yeah, it's. It's continuous. It's always an argument, isn't it? Yeah. But it's also you know, I always say a confused mind says no. Yeah. And so from all of the marketing, all the way to them buying, uh, you need to be congruent, Mm. right? The messaging, the field, the state of mind you put them in needs to be consistent, congruent all the way through. Uh, And then, because if anything is out of sorts, they won't just say no. They'll just say, I want to think it over. Thank you very much. Send me some information. I'll be in touch. Yeah. So in the back of their brain, they're like, ah, something just doesn't feel right. Yeah, definitely. And that for me, that's branding because why do like all these, you know, let's just say these e-commerce stores that have no branding and awareness in the space that are just popping up out of nowhere. They have to do all these fancy tactics and offers and all that stuff. And then you have Louis Vuitton who sell $5,000 handbags. Like this is a thing. They have real branding that's built up over years, consistency, congruency. And yeah, it's it's a long-term thing. People just don't want to put in the, the 30 years that it's going to take to do it, right? Yeah. So where where are you seeing success? Um, you're talking about you know, the, the cold email outreach. Yeah. Uh, should individuals like my son's telling me I need to be on TikTok? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I'm like, I, all right, but you know that, that I wouldn't be advertising, right? I would just be uh, making content. And it's like he's probably right. Just like, uh, yeah, you gotta yeah. Keep, so gotta learn this. This old dog's got to learn some new tricks. <laughs> this this is something I thought about the other day, which the for how I look at business right now is four different things, people, partners, systems, strategy. So get the bit like best people you can in through the door. Partnerships for me is going to be a massive thing of what we're doing in the next like 12 months. And that's how we're going to get ahead of like some of our competition the systems using the technology and everything else you can leverage, like the better technology you were just talking about me then. Imagine if you had to send out all those emails and receive them all. Technology can do all that stuff for you. So you need the best systems in place. And then, like I said, the strategy. One of, Again, one of my favorite quotes from Abraham Lincoln, if you had six hours to cut down a tree, spend the first four hours sharpening your ax. You need to make sure you've got strategy and that's how I'm seeing success. I know that's probably a high level thing and maybe you want a more specific answer, but that's where I'm putting the four pieces of time. Right now we're looking to recruit recruit a lot of people and then we're going to be going back to the strategy and uh, yeah, folks. Who are you you recruiting employees or affiliates? Employees, employees. So marketers, yeah, marketers, employees. Okay. And then probably some, uh, a, p- a couple of people on the operations side as well. Uh, but how are you feeding that machine? I mean, are you doing like organic content or is this all, yeah. is it all paid? Yeah. So organic, like, so when you say feeding that machine, obviously, you know, cold outreach, you, yeah, sure. You can pay people to do it, uh, but obviously you can do it yourself if you want. But yeah, what I'm doing is I'm every single day since I think it was March this year, I posted a piece of content on LinkedIn and just doing that, showing up every single day and actually 
engaging 10 times as much. I'm not talking about just saying, hey, great post. I'm talking about an actual engaging comment with someone in your community. That's given me a little bit of traction now. So the idea is, if I'm being like giving you the game plan, so to speak, is we started out with cold. Now it brought a bit of a reputation and I'm essentially starting on the content side and transition it into more inbound. So that's that's the idea. And obviously we've got our podcast as well. Cool. But it's going to take a long time, man. It's going to take a long time. Yeah, but it's working, right? Yeah, it's working, but I'm ambitious. So I want to, I want to keep growing <laughs> this company. <laughs> oh, very cool. So what do you want people to do after listening to this? Do, do you have some resources for them? Do you have a, a report? Like, what do you, what do you want them to do? Yeah, sure. So if you go to Google, type in Nigel Thomas Alpha Inbound, I'll be the first one that pops up. Go to LinkedIn and you just see my content. I post there every single weekday at the time of recording this podcast at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. And I tell you what you need to hear, not want to hear about paid social and e-commerce. So if you want some tips and tricks on that, I also share a few things on sales here and there, but if you also want to see my sales strategy in in place from a sales leadership standpoint and see that ecosystem, then go there and see it. And also, please reach out to me. Give me some feedback. I can give you some feedback. I love love brutal honesty. It's the only way we can push each other as human beings. So I love connecting with people. All right. Brutal honesty. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've got that website, Alpha Inbound, Nigel, the man, Thomas, all the way from Bristol. <laughs> yeah, born and bred in Manchester, actually, but I do live in Bristol right now. Oh, gotcha. All right. Yeah. Very cool, man. Well, uh, you know, you, you've you earned a, uh, a an adult beverage of your choice tonight. So uh, cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much. And also congratulations on the not one, but two weddings. Yeah. By the time this goes live, I will have a daughter that's married. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. Coming to? I don't feel that old, man. <laughs> You'll be happy. Right. You'll be happy. All Thank right, you so Nigel, much. I thanks appreciate for coming it. on, man. Have a great day. Likewise. So I love what he's talking about with, you know, including images and GIFs and videos to stand out. John Buchan does that in the Charm Offensive. Uh, drunk.thesalespodcast.com get you some of that um you gotta gotta step up your game okay how do you make people feel i see like nobody mm, how to put this gently you gotta have some game all right treat sales as seduction Treat it as like dating, okay? You're trying to get someone's attention. Playing hard to get is wise. You need to do it well. You need to be appropriately hard to get, but not impossible. You don't want to come off as a diva, as an ass, as arrogant, as cocky, as condescending. So there's an art to that. And very few people have it. Very few. Um, Look on Facebook. Just today, a friend of mine, she posted, and I shared it with another friend of mine. So one friend of mine is uh, big on Instagram, fitness model, blah, blah, blah. Been helping her. And, oh, my gosh, she gives me access to her account. Like, how do I reply to this, right? And it's just so bad. But this this other woman on Insta- on Facebook posted like, hey, fellas, I've been in a lot of requests and good grief. So I shared that with my other friends. She says, yep. And then you look at the comments and people are doing, guys are doing the exact thing. She's like, please don't do, don't message me with this stuff. Don't, don't call me. Don't video call me. Um, and I know you might be thinking, well, I'm not doing that on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. I guarantee you're sending out junk on LinkedIn and your regular emails. I, I'm the recipient of all types of pitches. People pitch me every day to come on the podcast. Uh, and, and it's usually not them. They hire an agency. They are crap. I get cold emails 
Uh, I'm, I finally had to reply to a guy today. I said, I literally said, WTAF, you know, how did I get on your list? Why is there no opt out option? Why are you incessantly marketing to me with no reply? I mean, it's just crap. He's a, has one of these co working spaces, he's expanding into my area. Um, it's just crap. How do you make people feel? These people don't think about it at all. So you, you need to take a long, hard look at yourself and, and answer honestly, are you doing some of this crap? Because that's what's hurting you. And it, it's hard to read the label from inside the bottle. Okay, it sounds self-serving, but I promise you it's not. I, everyone I help with their writing has their minds blown. Okay, I am good at it. I have a natural ability for it, but I have also worked on it for 30 years. I've been through more public speaking, training, communication, training. Like I said, I'm going to Austin for a reunion for this uh, marketing group I've been a part of for over 20 years since uh, maybe 2000, uh, probably like 2002, so about 20 years. Um, thousands of dollars spent on courses and books and and clients have paid me, you know, Infusionsoft back in the day for years would fly me out to spend three days at their accelerators and they'd bring people in from all over the country. Uh, a, a high-end family photographer from Jackson Hole, Wyoming, a, an asbestos remediation training company from Tucson, uh, mortgage people, real estate people in Arizona, uh, heart surgeons, uh, chiropractors. My very first client I had on this, this was 2011. Yep, it was around December. And it was their first one, and it was just two days back then, $10,000. They sold it out, uh, and I worked with a group of chiropractors that had a, a training academy for chiropractors to help them with their marketing. And I was helping them with their marketing. So, you know, th that right there spans 11 years um, I'm just telling you I'm, I'm good at this if you're in our sell more of everything group I answer questions I review your writing uh, you can join quarterly um, and it's going to help you you need to get a fresh set of eyeballs looking at your stuff I have several um, high-end my highest consulting clients right now uh, two are in the high tech software as a service space. One uh, is it's not high tech. Um, I don't know. I can't really get too much into it. Um, but it's B two B. Another is B two C. Uh, but high end consulting on fitness, and um, and all of them need help with their writing. All of them, and I've helped them all, and I help quickly. So, you know, come, you know, go back and listen to this if you need to. Reach out to Nigel if his software company can help, if you're doing the, the ads. If you want to just tighten up some things and test, do some quick tests on email headlines, social media posts. You know, uh, my friend on Instagram, I, I literally rewrite every post she makes. Um, because it, people write to be friendly. Okay, I write with a call to action in mind. Pique their curiosity, have them take an action. It's all sales. We have to sell people on s slowing their scroll, on reading. Uh, you know, so A, slow the scroll. B, get them to read. C, get them to read to the end. D, get them to click the link. E, get them to read, watch whatever's on that page. Where am I? E, F get them to opt in for something maybe uh, start a trial maybe it's that initial purchase maybe it's sign up for 10 percent off your first order maybe it's sign up for your newsletter all of those are sales are you thinking through this beginning to end very few are a lot are trying maybe but really struggling it doesn't have to be a struggle okay I would say it's enough of my get off my soapbox, but I won't. It's what I do. Okay. Uh, Roy Williams, the guy in Austin, you know, he says the risk of insult is the price of clarity. If you get your little feelers hurt, I don't give a crap as long as I'm being clear. Okay. Because if I'm not clear and you fail, that's on me. 
I've got to shout from the rooftops, Mo Better. To at least make people aware they have options to do Mo Better. So hit me up. Let me know how I can help you be Mo Better. Deal? Now go sell something. <laughs>